In this video, we'll talk about how we can use two of MATLAB's built-in functions to perform a direct nonlinear regression fitting a nonlinear mathematical model to, model to a data set. After studying this video, you should be able to formulate a curve fitting problem for nonlinear regression using MATLAB's fmin search function. You should also be able to use MATLAB's lsq curve fit function for nonlinear regression. So recall that some nonlinear equations cannot be transformed for linear regression. One of the examples we had was something like this. where we have model parameters, in this case A2, can't be isolated outside a basis function. So we actually couldn't transform this for a general linear least squares approach. So we need to take a different approach entirely. And the first approach we're going to look at is using one of MATLAB's optimization tools called fmin search to directly find the coefficients for the least squares fit. And this can also be a better approach for functions where you could transform for a linear regression. I've reproduced here that bacteria growth model from a previous video. And recall we looked at that model and just through qualitative observation we saw that it seemed like the model was veering off from the data for these last two data points. And recall some discussion there that what's happening is that in our linear regression we were actually minimizing the residuals of the linearized model. And depending on the transformation this might not be as good as working with the model directly. So again the goal of linear regression in general is to take this quantity the sum of the squares of the residuals with respect to the model and we want to minimize find the model coefficients that minimize this. So we want to keep that in mind that general definition of regression as we move forward. So Let's first talk about using MATLAB's fmin search to use this. So MATLAB's fmin search uses an iterative numerical algorithm. It's called the Nelder-Mead algorithm, but getting into the details here is beyond our scope. We're not going to get into those details. And it minimizes that function with respect to one or more variables. Here's the syntax for fmin search. Fun is going to be the function we want to minimize. x0 is going to be the initial guesses for the variables that we're minimizing. Options are some options for the function. They are set with the optim set command similar to f0. And then we have a parameters list and we can pass parameters through fmin search and it's using that same var r again approach that we've used in some of our own user defined functions. The main purpose of fmin search is for multivariable optimization. In other words, minimize the function with respect to one or more variables in that function. And it does that numerically. You can basically think of this as it introduces a small, in each iteration, it introduces a small perturbation in each of the variables successively and updates the guesses in the direction that results in a lower function evaluation until it reaches a minimum where that function is no longer changing significantly in a negative way. So 
how can we use this for nonlinear regression? Well, what we do is we're going to define the function that we send to fmin search. We'll use an anonymous function and define that as the squared to norm of the residuals. <coughs> so recall again that looks like that looks like this, the sum of the squares of the residuals. And then we'll pass the data through fmin search to our function as parameters. and specify, specify initial guesses for the model coefficients. And this is actually an important step in this case because fmin search may converge on some local minimum <coughs> that's not necessarily the best fit. So that qualitative evaluation of the curve fit is especially important in this approach. So that's fmin search. Before we get into an example, let's talk about LSQ curve fit. So this is a built-in function in MATLAB to really do this directly. It uses an also an iterative numerical algorithm and there's actually two choices for that algorithm in the options. We'll just stick with the default that it uses and again we're not going to get into the details of that but it also minimizes the squared two norm of the residuals with respect to data. So we're minimizing the same function but LSQ curve fit is designed explicitly for curve fitting and so we will input the function, which would be a function in terms of two variables, A is going to be the model parameters, and X is going to be how that model depends on the X data. So we want to make sure both of those are included in the function then A is going to be our vector of model coefficients. XI and YI are vectors of our X and Y data that we're fitting the model to. And one nice thing about the LSQ curve fit is we can set LB and UB, these are optional lower and upper bounds on the model coefficients. So if we know that it only makes sense that a certain model coefficient falls within a certain range, we can set those bounds. And again, the options things like the tolerance for the algorithm, um, the tolerance for the function evaluations in the algorithm, they're all set with that optim set command and we'll see how to do that in an example. So you might ask, well if it has this direct function for doing this, why are we even talking about fmin search? Well the reason for that is it actually turns out that fmin search is a little bit more efficient for doing this and a little bit more robust in that it will work with initial guesses that are farther off what they should be. And you can get a better understanding for that with some experience. So we're going to return to that example from before, the bacterial growth model, and we're going to look at doing two additional curve fits for this model, one with fmin search and one with LSQ curve fit. So let's look at the code for doing that. So this first section of code is using fmin search. And the first step here is to def we'll define that anonymous function. And recall that anonymous function is just sr, the sum of the squares of the residuals. And then setting our options, tall x and tall fun. <coughs> and then calling fmin search. We have initial guesses for the two model parameters and the data is passed as parameters through fmin search. 
And then the two model constants that we're solving for, Kmax2 and Cs2, those are A1 and A2. And the fact that they're A1 and A2, again, that comes from here. And in this definition of the model, I've actually used another anonymous function, K model, from earlier in the code, basically the uh, the code to use linear regression for this model. So I'd encourage you to download the M file and make sure you understand how that's working. And then here we're going to evaluate the fit quality and then do the same thing with LSQ curve fit. So this time just defining the model itself again in terms of the model constants and the X dependence and then calling LSQ curve fit with that model again initial guesses and here's our data now that shows up there I've left the bounds uh, those are just placeholders. I've left the, the lower bound and upper bound blank placeholders to get to the options command. So we're using the same tolerance options that we used for FMIN search. And again, backing out KMAX and CS from the output and doing a fit quality. And here's the commands to plot all the results. And let's see what we get and how it compares to our previous result that used linear regression. So again, here's the model, and the red line here is our earlier result with linear regression. And you see the green and the blue lines fall right on top of each other, and those are our results with a, two different approaches using nonlinear regression. And you can see pretty obviously that the qualitative fit is much better. We're threading the needle right between these two points. And the curve fit statistics back that up. We see for FMIN search, our R squared value is up to 0.999. And our standard error is down to 0 0.2. And same thing for the LSQ curve fit. So a much better fit compared to using linear regression on the transformed model, which still seemed like it had a good fit with a coefficient of determination of 0.9. But again, we see that this is much better. And what's happening there is recall that when we linearized this model, what we did is we started by inverting 1 over k. And as soon as we inverted 1 over k, the residual, so that behavior of the residuals is nonlinear. And actually, as C goes up, it the residuals would seem artificially small. And that's why this error seems to get worse. You see the models are pretty much on top of each other here. The error gets worse as we go farther because as C gets greater, the residuals of the linearized model are underreporting the error. Again, that's because it's 1 over k is what that is calculating for that curve fit. So the key thing to take away from this video, again, is here's the syntax for doing the curve fit in these two different ways. The top is fmin search. The next section here is LSQ curve fit. I encourage you to download this M file and make sure you understand how it's working. And also recognize that when we have situations like this where we've done something like inverting or taking the natural log to transform a nonlinear model into linear form, it does affect how the residuals in the curve fit behave and uh, compromises our curve fit algorithm a little bit. And that concludes this video.